But have you ever been on social media and seen a girl where you're like, damn, how does she get her man to do the most for her? He's buying her all types of flowers. He's spending all types of money. He's taking her on all types of trips. He, it's just like these men, this man is bending over backwards for her. And I can't even get a guy to text me back. And then you'll be scrambling, chasing after men. Please, can you love me? Please, I'm desperate. Please love me. Please, can you love me? Please, I'm so desperate. Please, just I'll do anything. Can, I, can you please text me back? I just, I just, and then you come to me. And you're asking, how do I get him to text me back? He won't text me. How do I get unblocked? He blocked me. He doesn't want to speak to me. How do I get him to like me? He doesn't even like me. He doesn't want to take me out on dates. He's talking to another girl. Five things that you can do to become irresistible to men. Number one, we have it girl energy if you walked into a party and you saw two different types of guys okay one type of guy the first guy is seven foot tall he's a seven foot tall giant okay he's got a supermodel face super attractive fit body and he's seven foot tall except at that same party he's in the corner shriveled up like a raisin he's got his drink in his hand He's looking down and he's not talking to anyone. He's shriveled up like a raisin, like this, shoulders down. He can't even look anyone in the eye. When people try to come up to him and talk, he's too shy and too awkward to even say a word, okay? He's just in the corner. He won't say a word. He's sitting down on the couch on the end, all small. He's seven foot tall, though, right? Supermodel face, right? That's guy number one. Guy number two is five foot eight he's got a dad bod he's the life of the party everywhere he goes at the party he's making people laugh he's making people cry they're hysterical they're hugging him they're they're all over him they're like oh my god we missed you i'm talking about the guys and the girls they're hugging you oh my god we missed you oh my god it's been so long oh my god you're so amazing he's telling stories everyone's listening the whole party feels like it's centered around him and his presence is just magnetic which one would you be more attracted to the seven foot guy who looks like a supermodel who's sitting down on the couch not making eye contact with anyone who's too awkward to even speak or the first or the second guy who is five foot eight got a dad bought on but he's walks around and everyone knows him everyone's friends with him if guy number two's got a dad bod and he's five eight if we're talking about the physical sense, right? The physical sense, right? It should be no competition between the guy who's five foot eight with a dad bod and the guy who's seven foot tall who looks like a supermodel. It should be no comp. There should be everyone should be saying guy number one based on physical traits. And the fact that people would even consider guy number two tells you in itself that there's more to your physical attraction to someone than just what they look like. If that's the case, then we're acknowledging, right, that energy can outward can be perceived by each uh, each individual, each other human being, and it plays a role in someone's desire for you. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for you, me. That's a good thing for all of us because it means that you don't have to look like a supermodel in order to create desire. You don't have to look like a supermodel in order to be irresistible to a man, whether it be multiple men or it be a specific man, right? You don't have to look like a supermodel. You don't have to have the, the smallest waist. You don't have to have the biggest dump truck. You don't have to have the most voluptuous breasts you don't have to have the most beautiful supermodel face it girl energy is essentially the confidence that you carry around with you that other people can be attracted to your attraction even in its physical sense is not just how you look on the outside it's actually about how you feel and the energy you project outwardly to other people because they are touched by that they experience that and they can actually be attracted to you more or less because of that. Obviously, some of you guys are asking, how do I get it girl energy? Just like most of your answers to your life and most of the, the solutions to your problems, the answers are within you. So what I mean by that is the it girl energy can only be exuded if you feel that way. 
And in order to feel that way, you have to take care of yourself and do things for yourself that will make you feel that way. It's like a snowball effect. You know how we always talk about the mindset and manifestation and spirituality. And we always talk about the only thing to the, the first way to start manifesting those things is to affirm yourself. And to keep those affirmations going until you brainwash yourself. And in the process of brainwashing yourself, you're going to start seeing that thing over and over and over again. And because you see that thing over and over again, because you brainwashed yourself, then you begin to believe it even more and you brainwash yourself even more and it becomes a vicious cycle. It's the same thing with it girl energy, even if you don't feel like you're the it girl, the first key is lying to yourself, okay? The first, just lie to yourself. If you got to say it a hundred times over and over again, I'm the it girl. I'm the it girl. I'm the one, everyone is obsessed with me. You can, but if you want to, and I'm so serious, I'm so serious. If you guys are into manifestation and spirituality, if you've already been introduced to that, you should know about things like this. But my advice to you, honestly, is if you really struggle with feeling like the it girl and you don't know how you're going to even start or try down that path, My honest advice to you would be to every single day before you go to bed and when you wake up, you spend 30 minutes, no music, put some put some earplugs in or just sit there in silence. And I just want you to say over and over again, everyone is obsessed with me. Everyone is obsessed with me. Everyone is obsessed with me. I'm so serious. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. I do. I do this. I affirm myself every morning and every night. So don't think that I'm giving you this advice and not doing it myself. The girls who you look at and you're like, damn, her man loves her so much. Damn, her man would do anything for her. Damn, her man. Her man spends so much money on her. You know, those relationships where you where you look at their relationship and you say, damn, how do I get a man to uh, do all this stuff for me like she gets that those men to do for her? The only way she gets these men to bend over backwards for her is because she gets these men obsessed with her or they want to bend over backwards for her. And then you'll be scrambling, chasing after men. Please, can you love me? Please, I'm desperate. Please love me. Please, can you love me? Please, I'm so desperate. Please, just, I'll do anything. Can can you please text me back? I I just, and then you come to me and you're asking, how do I get him to text me back? He won't text me. How do I get unblocked? He blocked me. He doesn't want to speak to me. How do I get him to like me? He doesn't even like me. He doesn't want to take me out on dates. He's talking to another girl. And you wonder why these things are happening. And it starts with your mindset because you've already started to believe that other women, other women are worth more than you are. And I'm here. I'm the, I'm a guy. I'm, how sad is it that me as a man, I have to mansplain to you that you are just as valuable as the other women and you are worth just as much as the other woman. I shouldn't have to tell you that. That should be something that you already carry around with you. And so if you, if you struggle to believe that, that is the first thing that you need to be working on. See, number two, high demand. If you want to be irresistible to men, they have to have the perception at least, right, that you are in high demand. It is human nature. Okay. I don't want you guys to get so don't get so upset that I'm telling you this and you're like, why do men only want the girls who are in high demand? Listen, I'm not here to tell you what's right and wrong. I'm just here to spread to you the truth so that you can use it in your everyday life. But the truth is the most irresistible women are in high demand and they are perceived by those men as being in high demand which is why they are irresistible. And like I say, it's human nature because it's the same way for you. I don't know if you guys know this and let me know if you've ever experienced this, but guys become a lot more attractive, whether you want to admit it or not. If other girls want them, number one, and also number two, if they're in a relationship. Not that you want them to cheat or anything like that, but the, but watching other women want a man also makes them more attractive. Have you ever experienced that where when you tell your friend, Hey, I, I like this guy. I'm into this guy. All of a sudden now your friend wants to be cool, wants to be buddy, buddy with this guy. One of the ways of thinking about it is groupthink in a sense. I don't know how many of you guys know what groupthink is, but it's basically just the idea that you're likely to have the same 
perspective as whatever the group is or the majority is. So if everyone feels a particular way about something and they voice that to you, you're likely to feel that same way simply because everyone else feels that way. And you don't want to be the only person who believes differently because you'll feel like you're not being accepted if you don't feel the same as everyone else. You want to be part of the collective, right? Do you guys know any celebrities? And you can mention them if you want. Do you guys know any celebrities um, out in the world that like everyone thinks like they're so good looking? But then when you see them, you're kind of like, what does everyone see in this person? It's not really about how much more attractive any particular celebrity is than anyone else. It's really more about the collective thought that, hey, this person is super, super duper attractive. And so the other person says, you know, I don't know if I saw them on the street. I don't know if I would think they're that attractive. But as time goes on and they hear that from everyone else over and over and over again, they start to believe like, yeah, actually, no, they're they're attractive. No, I see it. I see it. Right. They convince themselves that it's true because everyone else also believes it. There's a reason all the famous people are the most attractive people, because as the collective comes together and says, oh, they're famous, they're powerful and it makes them attractive. Right. Everyone tries to convince themselves. Oh, my God, this person's so attractive. Oh, my God, this person's so much better than everyone else. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can take advantage of that by at least giving off the perception that you're in high demand. Because when you give off the perception that you're in high demand, you're gonna trigger that. You're gonna trigger that emotion in a man that want, inspires him to chase after you and motivates him to chase after you. Because if he sees you're in high demand, if he sees all these other guys like you, he's automatically convincing himself. This is why This is why I said these techniques are so amazing because it doesn't even require you to be a supermodel. He'll convince himself, oh my God, you're so attractive. I see in you what everyone else sees in you. I want you. I desire you. And that stays with them. It's not like, I want you guys to understand this isn't something where it's like, oh, it only works for a little bit and then it stops working. As you continue utilizing these methods, it will keep on working, right? It will continuously work. So then your question probably comes, how can I make myself be in high demand? How can I pre pre present myself as someone who is in high demand? Let me tell you, you can do it in very subtle ways. It doesn't have to be something super extravagant, something super crazy. This is why I bring up it girl energy first, because it girl energy will attract more people to you. And in the process of you just being a normal human being, being, fr being friendly, being kind, being uh, open, being personable, being charismatic, because the it girl energy will attract people. It will also make you more charismatic. Those guys will get an opportunity to see how much other people desire you. They'll see how much your energy and the person that you are is attracting other men to you. Right? See how they kind of all they kind of all work together. Cuz as you have it girl energy, you'll attract more people, which will make you be in more demand, which will also make him more attracted to you. So I want you to allow guys to see that at any chance you get. So if you have a coworker that is the guy that you want to really um, get to be obsessed with you and make yourself irresistible to, then you should make sure you put yourself in a position where he can see the other coworkers who also desire you and want you. I'm not saying you got to, you know, do anything crazy. I'm not saying you got to put your hands on anyone. I'm not saying you got to make it super extra sensual and overly flirty. Just be yourself and allow him to see how much the other coworkers want you. Or if it's at a party and you see other guys are eyeing you, other guys are eyeing you down. Now, I'm talking about if you're single, okay? Don't go, I'm not saying you should go out and do this stuff if you're in a relationship. But if you see other guys are eyeing you down and you have a particular guy at the party that you want and you know he's probably also looking in your direction or noticing you, and this, and this other guy comes up to you and he's chatting with you, have a nice chat with him. Get the guy, get the guy laughing or you know what I mean? You know, allow him to be all, uh, you not all over. You don't have to put his hands on you. But if he wants to give you some flirty energy, you know, give him some flirty energy back. Let, let the guy that you want see that other guys are wanting you. Other guys want to take your number. Other guys want to get your Instagram. Listen to me. 
I didn't say be toxic. I didn't say be toxic. I didn't say be toxic because I don't want you guys going out saying that's wrong. Why are you teaching us to be uh, toxic people or toxic? No, no, no. I'm not saying to be toxic. There's a way to go about this with the balance. OK, but I would be lying to you if I if I wasn't honest with you by telling you, hey, yeah, if guys are seeing that all these other guys want you and give you a lot of flirty energy and they and they chase after you. Yeah, it's going to make you more attractive. I'm sorry. I have to be honest with you. And so if you want to utilize that, don't complain about that. Utilize it so that you can get what you want. All emotions can be used in a positive or negative way. That's kind of what I'm kind of almost getting at is the emotion of jealousy. But even jealousy isn't necessarily always a bad emotion. Jealousy can be used in a way that is positive. You can increase someone's desire by sprinkling in a little bit of jealousy there because the jealousy reminds them how much they want you. It also reminds them how much they want you more than the other person. Because the reality of it is, whether the, whether the men want to admit it to you or not, the women that are the most desirable, it is a competition for them. And only the men who are the most desirable will get the women who are the most desirable. So it is a reflection on you as a man if you're able to get the women who are the most desirable. So if he thinks you are the most desirable, he also knows that getting you is a reflection of how desirable you are he is. So don't fight it. Utilize it to your advantage so you can let him see there's a competition and hey, it's survival of the fittest out here that may the best man win. Because what happens is his motivation to win, his motivation to get you, his motivation to make you his girl is what's going to make him act right, is what's going to make him treat you right, is what's going to make him treat you with respect and do the things that you want him to do because you hold the cards. When you're over here, oh, I'm not worthy of anything. No, guys shouldn't be obsessed with me. No, I'm not. I'm not the type of guy that guys will obsess over. No, no, no. I'm not worthy of that. I just want a man to maybe love me sometimes one day and text me back a couple of times. You know, that's that's all. That's all I really want is really just like the bare minimum. So then what happens is when you come across a guy who finally shows you some interest, right? You have all of this desperate energy and you're like, oh my God, you finally like me? Please stay, please stay. Can you finally like me? Oh my God, I just, I just can't believe that someone finally likes me. And they're kind of like, uh, uh. If you're like this, then there's no competition for you. If you're like this, then you're not in high demand. If you're like this, then nobody else wants you. That's why you're so desperate. So all of this subconsciously shows him that there's no reason for him to be desiring you. You don't even think of yourself as desirable. And clearly, if you don't think of yourself as desirable, then nobody else desires you. So he's kind of in this big house by himself and he's chasing after. He thinks to himself, I'm telling you, on a subconscious level, right? When he sees that you're so desperate for his love and attention and you don't believe that you're worth anything, right? What he tells himself is, damn, why am I chasing after the girl that nobody wants? Because even when I get her, it's not going to be a good reflection on me. I'm just going to have the girl that nobody wants. Number three is kind of in relation to high demand, but in the opposite sense. Number three is scarcity. Because relationships are a lot like business. Because business, right, good business and good marketing is a function of human psychology. And human psychology is all about getting and eliciting a response from human beings in a particular way or in a particular manner to get them to make a specific decision. In the business world, it's about basically manipulating human emotion in the way that humans will naturally respond to things to get them to purchase your product or your service. They only get that concept from human psychology. That's the only way the business works is by understanding how human beings work. So if you're mirroring the bit, if you're mirroring the principles of business or marketing, right, you're going to be mirroring the principles of human psychology. And the whole point of business is to get someone, like I said, to purchase your product or service, right? That's the goal. And for you, the whole point of your business, your business is you, and you're trying to get these men who desire you. Okay. So I, the reason I say scarcity is because as a man feels like you're in high demand, but you're also scarcely available to all of those men, 
it makes you that much more desirable because it's not just you're in high demand and you're available to everyone. No, you're in high demand and you're available to no one. When you present yourself as scarce and you're in high demand, oh my God, they just, guys can't help themselves. Like, this is what I mean by you, you, you have to understand when you do things like this, when you do methods like this, you're triggering parts of a man that he has no control over. Okay, you're triggering parts of the human brain that the man couldn't turn off even if he wanted to. Have you guys seen the craze that's going on about the Stanley Cups and how unavailable the Stanley Cups are? They're like sold out everywhere. People are selling them on eBay for like $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 $5, for a Stanley Cup. I wish I had my 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 water bottle with me. It, it's It's a regular probably like metal cup with the straw in it. They're in such high demand now because a couple videos went viral and a bunch of people were buying them up and now they're not available in stores anymore. And so because they're not available in stores anymore and everyone wants them, it's creating this panic where people are buying them up even more and then selling them for like triple the price, not even triple, like a hundred times the price. It's ridiculous. Nothing has changed about the Stanley Cup from when it started going viral to uh, in its inception. The actual physical product hasn't changed that much. The actual physical product has not changed that much. The only difference is the demand is so high that it has, out, it has outweighed the amount of product they even have available. And because the demand is so overwhelming and there's no product, it creates even more demand. So it creates this snowball effect where there's more scarcity because there's more demand and because there's more scarcity, there's even more demand and there's a vicious cycle where now people are selling those same Stanley cups that you could have just gone to the store and buy, right? For relatively cheap. Now they're being sold for 10 times the price and it's the same Stanley cup. But because of the way they've been marketed and because of the way they went viral and the demand has increased so much, it has taken the scarcity way up as well. And so because the scarcity is up along with the demand, now you have a whole bunch of people who are, will do anything for the Stanley Cup, okay? Now the value is way more. Now, now if I tell you I'll give you a Stanley Cup or I'll give you an average $20 water bottle or a thermostat or a thermos flask, thermos flask, right? You'd be like, oh, I want the Stanley Cup. I want the Stanley Cup. Even if the thermo flask is just as good or a little bit better than the Stanley Cup because the Stanley Cup's demand is so high, the scarcity is so high, it doesn't even matter what the quality of the actual product is because your mind is so focused on the demand and the scarcity, you don't care what the quality is. You've convinced yourself that the quality is amazing. This is why I say when you utilize these methods, you don't have to be a supermodel. You don't have to look like Jennifer Lopez. You don't have to look like Kim Kardashian. You don't have to be anyone but yourself and implement these strategies and people will be worshiping you at your feet, okay? Because it's not about your physical uh, traits. It's not about your physical attractiveness. And obviously, you guys are asking, well, how do I create scarcity? How do I, how am I supposed to create scarcity? You're gonna have to be a little bit unavailable. When I say keep to yourself, I mean, you're, you don't want to be out there so much where you're available to anyone at any time. And some people might be like, well, but that's boring. I don't get to, I'm not saying you got to keep to yourself and do nothing and stay inside all the time. I'm just saying you shouldn't be available to everyone all the time, 24 seven. There's a way to be scarce. That's attractive while still creating interest in people. You never want to give someone, whether it be a relationship or a, 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 a situation, whatever. You never want to give someone the impression that they're the be all and end all of your life and you have nothing going for you or nothing that you care about or nothing that's important to you other than them. The only thing people will do with that amount of power is they'll abuse it and they'll take advantage of you. If I was on the street offering you a free brand new Stanley Cup and everywhere you went, everyone was offering people free Stanley Cups, I guarantee you, you wouldn't think the Stanley Cup was as valuable as you do now when you're seeing it go viral and you're seeing it sell out of stores. And it's not about the quality changing. It's simply that if it's readily available to you all the time, everywhere for free, you're, you're naturally, your human nature is naturally going to convince you that it's really not worth that much. Because if people are giving it away on the street for free, it's probably not that valuable, even if the quality is insane. That's why 
That's why no matter what you're selling in business, no matter what product or service you're selling, it's really not about how good your product is. It's really never about that. It's mostly about how good your marketing of that product or service is. The same way in your relationship with people and human beings, it's really not about how physically attractive your human body is. It's really not. Right? It's more about how well or how poorly you market the person that you are. And so market would be the perception. There is a balance to being scarce, even to people who already love you and care about you and want to be with you, where it makes them want you even more. If I told you that you can have anything in my kitchen to eat, you can have anything in the fridge, anything on the counter, anything in the cupboard. You're probably going to go through and maybe pick something you like, or maybe you'll realize you're not hungry. But if I tell you, you can have anything to eat in my house, you can have anything in the cupboards, anything in the fridge, anything on the kitchen, anything on the stove, except you cannot at all costs, you cannot touch the chocolate chip cookies on in the cookie jar on top of my fridge. That is the only thing you better not lay your hands on. Everything else is available to you. What's the only thing <laughs> you're going to start thinking about or having interest in? I wonder what the chocolate chip cookies on top of the fridge taste like. I wonder why he doesn't want me to eat those chocolate chip cookies. And now all of a sudden, even if I got a five course meal laid out, even if I got the most amazing snacks in the cupboard, I've got caviar and lobster and, 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 and rigatoni and veal and five amazing sandwiches, burgers, sausages, glizzies. Everything, Jamaican patties, oxtail, everything, plantain, everything you could possibly ever want is laid out there. All you're thinking about is those silly chocolate chip cookies that are sitting on top of my fridge. Because I gave you access to everything for free. And I only denied you access to the chocolate chip cookies. Which is why. The only thing you can focus on or think about is the chocolate chip cookies. Scarcity will make you irresistible. Number four, emotional security. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably like, okay, this one I've never really heard of. This one I don't really understand when you say it. Emotional security, right, is also the process and the concept of believing in yourself, validating yourself, right? having confidence in yourself because what happens is when you have all of those things you are whole whole and i don't mean whole as in like a hole inside you i mean like whole as in like your spirit and your soul and what happens when you are whole you don't need or seek other people's validation you don't need or seek other people to have confidence in you or believe in you because you believe in yourself you validate yourself. You know that you're beautiful. You know that you're valuable. You know that you're worth something. You don't need, I'm not saying it wouldn't be nice to hear it, but you don't need someone else to tell you that in order for you to believe it because you already believe it. And that emotional security will come across in the way that you talk. And it will also come across a lot in the way that you deal with people in a relationship. Even the guys who are not as emotionally intelligent will feel that subconsciously. They'll feel it in the way you act and the way you treat them and the way you treat the relationship if you have emotional security or a lot of emotional insecurity because you don't have the emotional security in yourself. You don't represent someone who has it girl energy. And if you don't have it girl, it girl energy, how can you be in high demand? If you're not in high demand, how can you be scarce? You see how they all kind of flow into each other and are of each other, right? That's why I talk to you guys all the time about 
find out what your purpose is or find out what you're passionate about. Find out what you care about other than just being a girlfriend. Okay? That's not your only purpose in life is to be a girlfriend or a wife. Okay? You're intelligent, smart, capable, right? You're worth a lot more than just being a girlfriend. I'm not saying that you shouldn't want to be a girlfriend or a wife. But you are worth more than just that. That is probably the number one issue that a lot of you guys are having. You're sitting here on your couch thinking, oh, but I don't know what I like. I don't know what I'm into. I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what, what my hobby is. Well, you go out and you try some things, okay? It's not rocket science. Like I told you, I'm not going to give you guys a magic pill that's going to solve all your problems. Right. And anyone that's going to convince you of that is lying to you. I will not give you no magic pill that will solve all your problems. I'm not going to give you a magic pill that's going to tell you exactly what you should do and exactly what you're passionate about and exactly what your hobby should be. You're going to have to figure that out. And the only way for you to figure that out is to get off your butt and go and try things. Try things that you're uncomfortable with. Try things that you don't like. Try something. I told you guys this yesterday. You live in a microwave society. You have so much knowledge at your fingertips on your phone. Before, when you lived in a town and you wanted to go out and explore new things, you had to like know people. You had to ask a bunch of people questions. You had to have friends. You had to have connections to get places and do things or to hear about stuff. Nowadays, everything is so easy. Not even just Google. If you're even lazier than that, you can go on TikTok. I, I'm so serious. I'm so try this after you watch the live. You'll be shocked. You can go on TikTok. And if you live, even if you live in a suburb or you live in a suburb that's on the outskirts of a bigger city, you can go on TikTok and type in things to do in whatever city you live in. Things to do in Toronto, Ontario. That's where I live. Things to do in Los Angeles, California. Things to do in New York. Things to do in Miami. Why are you in Miami? Things to do in Paris. Things to do in Manchester. You can even be as specific as to say date night, right? In uh, my city, that's not a restaurant, right? There's, there's content creators that literally, I'm telling you, they literally make content around things to do that isn't going to a bar, club, or restaurant. Because obviously those are the most likely things that people would do. Number five is mystery. Now, mystery is a little bit confusing because everyone starts to think to themselves, well, what really is mystery? Like, wh what is that really about? I don't know how to create mystery. I don't know how to be mysterious. I'm not a mysterious person. You don't have to be, sh uh, I'm trying to think, you don't have to be a super villain or a CIA agent to be mysterious, okay? There is something so, I'm going to tell you the truth as a man. There is something so fascinating about a woman who is about herself, into herself, um, and just goes about life in this really beautiful way where it's kind of like she just has a glow, but you just kind of, you see her and you're like, I just wonder about her. I wonder what she's like. I wonder how she thinks. I wonder what her life is like. I wonder where she's been. And there's something really magical about when a girl carries herself a very specific way. It just creates this really interesting gravitational pull where you just want to seek her out more. You just want to know more about her. You just want to learn her and understand her. If you can only just grab a grab a hold of her it's like she's just like she's like water you every time you try to grab a hold of her it just slips through your hands right there's something about the psychology of that that makes you irresistible to a man you can have mystery about you just by simply taking care of yourself not looking for the validation of others not looking for others to tell you what to do or how to act or how to speak or how to think right when you become an independent thinker, when you start to make decisions for you because they're the best decision for you, when you start to move around and make decisions for your life and for yourself with confidence, 
When you're able to look in the mirror and truly believe you're the it girl, when you're able to pour into yourself, take care of yourself, take yourself on nice dates, take yourself out to, to, uh, to give yourself a nice present, reward yourself, do things for yourself, care for yourself, have days that you love yourself. You walk around with an aura that is mysterious because people begin to wonder about you. Why is she not phased by the world around her? Why is she not shaken by everything that's going on? Why is she not trying to be more like everyone else? Why is she always just being herself? Because like I talked to you guys about the previous for the it girl energy, high demand, scarcity, emotional security. When you truly have those things, right? You won't try to be more like the crowd. You'll try to be more like yourself. And the more you try to be like yourself, the more people will be attracted to you for being you. Because a lot of us are trying to be someone else, right? A lot of us have jealousy and insecurity in ourselves that we find it hard and difficult to be ourselves, which is why in the world, we tend to admire people who are more themselves than they are other people. Because subconsciously, we all have a desire to be more of ourselves and less of other people. Because people see you and they meet you and they want to know more about you. They want to know, how did you become who you are? How are you like this? How, how did you become this? You become so interesting and magnetic to people because you're just you. And this is the most amazing part about everything I talked about before, and it crystallizes itself perfectly in the mystery, because it girl energy, high demand, scarcity, emotional security, all that good stuff. It seems like things that you really have to focus so much of your energy on actively doing every single day, but you re you'll realize after a while of really believing and taking action towards being the it girl, you'll realize that the rest of them come naturally you'll realize that the more you become the it girl as it relates to who you are and have that confidence within yourself, that people are so intrigued by you just for being you. That's why people say, oh, let go and you'll get exactly what you asked for, right? Because when you actually become the it girl, it doesn't matter to you what other people are doing, how they think, how they feel, how they react, how they respond, because you're consumed with yourself. And you're only worried about what you have going on. And you're okay with that. And you have this peaceful energy that people wonder, how do you carry yourself with such grace? How do you have so much peace in your life? Because there is a beauty in just being you. You're the only person on this earth with the fingerprint that you have. Right? No matter if you have a, t a twin, a triplet, a quadruplet, whatever you are, as an individual, you are unique to yourself. There is nobody on this planet, not now, not before, not ever, that will have the exact same DNA as you. So the magic and the mystery is really about being more of yourself. More than anything. And the more you are yourself, the more you step into that eight girl energy, the more you embody the soul and the spirit of someone who is truly irresistible.